Okay, so in this problem we're told, calculate FA and FB for the beam shown in the figure. The downward forces represent the weight of the machinery on the beam. Assume the beam is uniform and has a mass of 280 kilograms. So I went ahead and drew the figure here. Basically we have this uh, beam right here, and we know it's going to have these two supports. And so we're, these are going to have forces pointing upwards holding it up with FA and FB, right? And that's what we're trying to find here. We're trying to figure out uh, what these values are. And then we also have three forces uh, acting downwards, right? And these are due to the weights of the machinery. So 2,200 newtons here, which is one meter away from FB. You have 31 or 3,100 newtons there, uh, which is three meters away from this one. And then 4,300 newtons there, which is basically four meters from this force or two meters away from FA. And then the, the last force that we have to add is the force due to gravity. And so this force is always at the center of gravity, right? Which in this case will just be in the middle of our beam here, right? It's in the center. And we know that's going to be equal to mg, where m is the mass of our uh, beam, right? And then g is just acceleration due to gravity. So they give us the value of the mass of the beam. They tell us it's 280 kilograms. So that's basically everything that they give us. And now what we're going to want to do is talk about how we're going to solve it. So uh, I know that I'm going to be solving for one of these forces. And generally in a problem like this, where you have uh, two forces, okay, you can eliminate one of them by summing the torque. So we know that torque equals force times distance times the sine of theta, okay? This is the formula for it. And if I sum the torque, I can sum it at any point on this uh, beam here, okay? And if I choose to sum it on a point, where there's a force going through it that I don't know. When I sum the torque about this point, the force going through it will be eliminated, leaving us with only one unknown. So if I sum it here at FB, the only force uh, unknown would be FA, meaning I could solve for it, right? And the reason that is, is uh, if I sum the torque about this point, the torque due to FB is gonna be zero since the distance away from the force is zero since it's right on top of it. So that's the trick we're gonna use to solve this problem. So the first thing we know is the sum of the torque equals zero, right? And it's always zero if our system isn't moving, right? We have a static problem here. So we know the torque zero since there's no angular acceleration. Um, so zero equals, and then we have to sum up all the torque about a point. So as I said before, we'll just pick this point here and we have to sum up the torque due to everything. So uh, let's just call the different ones. Uh, actually, first I need to explain something. So if we sum the torque, and when we sum it, if the force that we're summing the torque of makes it go in a clockwise direction, we say the torque is positive. And if it goes in a counterclockwise direction, we say it's negative. So if you notice this force right here, it's going to push it like this, right? And it's rotating around this point. So it'll go like something like this. And we know that this is clockwise. Therefore, uh, TFA, right? We can say the torque due to FA is going to be positive. Then looking at this one, right? These. This will go counterclockwise, this will too, this will too, and this will. So every other force is going to make it go counterclockwise. Therefore, all of these are going to be negative. So you can say the torque due to, we'll just say the 4300, and this is minus, keep in mind, because it's going counterclockwise. Then we have to minus the torque due to the 3100, minus the torque due to the mg, and then minus the torque due to the 2200. Okay, so uh, now what we got to do is, solve each of these figure out what each of these torques are and then we'll be able to solve for uh fa so i know torque equals force times distance so the force in this case we're summing it for fa right or solving it for fa so the force is fa the distance from our uh lever here or our point of rotation is well we know the force is right here right so what is this distance we're looking at the perpendicular distance so two plus four is six plus three is 9 plus 1 is 10. So the distance is just 10 meters. So we have the 10 meters there. And then I'm going to explain the sine of theta, but I'm only going to explain it uh, once because uh, for all the others, it'll make sense. But essentially, theta is the angle between the direction of the force and the lever arm. So you can imagine the lever arm is where it's connected to our thing. So this would be the lever arm, right? Because it rotates around. And then our force is pointing upwards. And theta is the angle between these two, which means you notice that it's at a 90 degree angle. So this is 90 degrees, so theta would be 90 degrees. If theta is 90 degrees, the sine of 90 is just 1. Therefore, we can just ignore it. And for every single one of these, it's always going to be 90 degrees. So, um, right, when we did the distance. So, 
uh, we don't actually have to include it since it's just gonna cancel out to one for every single one of these. So we're just gonna ignore it, but just keep that in mind uh, why I'm not writing that. So FA times 10 is your torque due to FA. Now let's do the torque due to the 4300 Newton force. So this one is obviously the force is 4300 Newtons. They tell us that. And now what's the distance? Well, we know it's gonna be four meters plus three meters plus one. So four plus three plus one, that's eight meters. So we know that. Now let's do the torque due to the 3100 uh, Newtons. So obviously the force is 3100. What is its distance from the point of rotation? Well, we got three meters here, uh, one meter there. Three plus one is four. Now let's do the torque due to mg. So what is the force in this case? Well, it's the force due to gravity. Uh, so the force is just m, right? What is the mass? It is 280 times g, which is just 9.8. Uh, and then we have to multiply it by the distance, right? right? This is just the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, the distance away, we know it's at the center of the beam. So we know it's right here, which would mean it's five meters away from the edge, right? Five meters away. So the distance away from our point of rotation is just five meters. So uh, let's do that. So we have five meters there is our distance. Cool. Now let's do uh, the torque due to the 2200. So obviously it's 2200 Newtons. Um, and then we have the distance. So this one's just one meter away, right? So they give us that. And now we have every single thing, right? So. Notice in this equation, the only unknown is FA, so we can just go ahead and solve for it. So uh, what I'm going to do is say TFA equals, and I'm just going to move all these negative ones to the other side. And so keep in mind, I'm multiplying this by 10, right? Because T torque FA is 10 times, oh wait, never mind. Sorry about that. Torque FA, I, I thought I wrote FA, that's my bad. But uh, torque FA, right, all I'm doing is moving these to the other side. So we have the torque due to the 4300 plus the torque due to the 3100 plus the torque due to mg, plus the torque due to 2200. And so now we just want to plug in what we solve for. So we have 10 FA equals 4300 times 8 plus 3100 times 4 plus 280 times 9.8 times 5 plus 2200 times 1. So keep in mind, all I did was just write these values and plug them in there. So uh, if we wanted to solve for this, you would just divide by 10. Keep in mind, I'm dividing that. It's kind of written weird, but you're just going to want to divide by 10, whatever that is added up. So 4,300 times 8 plus 3,100 times 4 plus 280 times 9.8 times 5 plus 2,200 times 1, uh, and then divide that by 10. So when you go ahead and do this, you should get a value of... Six thousand two hundred and seventy-two. So FA is going to be equal to six thousand two hundred seventy-two, uh, and then this will be newtons, obviously, right? Because we're dealing with force. So all we did was just plug them in and solve, and now we have FA. So uh, this is one of your answers. So FA right here, that's the support, right? The force there. Next, what we want to do is solve for FB. Um, this is actually a lot easier since uh, we don't need to sum the torque. We just got to sum the forces. So uh, the way this works is, I know the sum of the forces in the y are going to be equal to zero, right? Since this system is static, all the forces equal zero. Uh, and so what we can do is just add up the forces. So before we couldn't do this since we had two unknowns, FA and FB, right? If we sum the forces, we would have two, so we couldn't solve. But notice we solve for one of them now. So the only unknown force in this system here is FB. So if we sum the forces, it'll just be a matter of solving for it. So uh, we know FA is... 6,272. If it goes upwards, I'm going to call it positive. Downwards if it's negative. So let me zoom out a bit. Minus 4,300, right? That's that force. Minus 3,100. Minus 2,200. And then we're assuming FB goes up, so we'll add it. Now what we want to do is solve for FB. So FB equals, and I'll just move all of these to the, uh, to the other side. So minus 6,272 plus 4,300 plus 3,100 plus 2,200. And uh, yeah, so let's see what this is. Minus 6272 plus 4300 plus 3100 plus 2200. And you should get 
a val wait, I think I messed up one second. Oh, I forgot to include the mass due to gravity. That's why. Sorry about that, guys. So I didn't include this force. I that's my mistake. So we actually have to minus another value, which is mg. So the mass was 280, right? Times 9.8. Sorry about that. I just was going too fast. So 280 times 9.8, uh, right? So this would be minus. So we would add it over here. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, so we have minus 6272 plus 4300 plus 3100 plus 2200 plus 280 times Okay, yeah, so when you plug all this in, you're going to get a value of 6,072 newtons, right? So this is going to be your answer for FB. So 6,072 newtons is your FB force. Uh, and yeah, so sorry about missing that there. That's my mistake. But make sure you don't rush things like I did, or else you're going to miss a force like that and get it wrong. So uh, sorry about that. And then uh, your answer for FA is going to be right here. So you can round whoever you'd like. You can say 6,300 and 6,100. Uh, I'll leave that to you. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just a quick rundown. Uh, I knew I could get rid of one of the forces by summing the torque, right? Because I could eliminate it like we did here by not having to do FB, right? Because it went right through it. Uh, and then, yeah, so then it was just a matter of solving for FA since I know that some of the torques equal zero. And then for B, all we had to do is just sum the forces. Since we actually knew FA now, uh, it was the only remaining force here. So uh, it was just the only unknown and we could just solve for it by uh, adding them up. Uh, and yeah, so these are going to go ahead and be your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.